This is Believe in Buckeyes. This show is brought to you by Bet Online. Jim, hit him with that. Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA Finals and Stanley Cup Finals this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head over to our online casino and get in on the game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use the promo code BLEAV for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here. And if you have any issues with gambling, always feel free to reach out to 1 800 Gambler. They're 24 7 to help you out with anything you may need in that category. But yes, this is Believe in Buckeyes. I'm Brian Browning with All American quarterback Chimney Chekwa. And we caught it last show, man. We said, hey, the summer is about to get hot. These recruits are about to start taking their official visits. We're about to start getting some commits coming in. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some um, some big commits, man. And it's, it's starting to almost feel kind of crazy in terms of just the, the level of talent that's committing, the level of talent that's still interested and likely to potentially possibly commit. Um, Ohio State is killing it when it comes to recruiting. Um, I mean, it's something to be excited about. I know a lot of people want to say, like, it doesn't matter off season, you know, y'all off season champions or whatever. Well, you got to win in everything in order to win yeah. in the end. So, um, some big, big, uh, a big summer. It's still ahead. Yeah. It's still a big summer. Still, you know, we're still in that uh, official visit window, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so uh, if you guys have missed it, just in this past week, since our last episode, first we have a running back commit out of, I'm going to say Cleveland or Northeast Ohio, however you want to say it. Uh, his name, Bo Jackson. I mean, that's a strong yeah. name for a running back. Yeah. Bo Jackson, I believe his, his official full name is Lamar Bo Jackson Jr. I mean, he got a name for uh, for championships, right? I mean, that's a fantastic name for a football player, let alone a running back. And then, uh, and then we also had a, a safety commit, right? Safety out of Maryland, um, Fahim Delane. Yep, Fahim Delane, man. And then that's a guy you had a chance. Now we all, if you're from Ohio, obviously, you kind of keep your ear to the streets and what's going on. One of our former uh, Buckeyes, uh, Nick Patterson, who, who plays safety at Ohio State, he actually coaches Bo Jackson in high school, and he's just saying, "Hey, he he he's legit. You know, he's going to be a fantastic player for us. He has all the the abilities to to kind of go on and be a, have a successful college career." So we we kind of knew about Bo a little bit here, but you had a chance yourself to kind of look at some of Fahim's tape out of safety out of Maryland. A uh, four-star athlete, and you was pretty impressed, right? I mean, is yeah, that fair to say? He, yeah, he's a baller, man. And you know, with a safety, safety is kind of one of those positions where you know it's a it's a guy who has the athleticism, the skill, the talent. And he usually is a dog in in high school, uh, but may not be, you know, may not be fluid enough to play corner, or may project to you know have a little bit more size. Um, to move in to be, to be safety. But he's Delane, man. He's just he's just a dog, man. You watch him, uh, watch his highlight tape, just all over the field. You send him on a blitz. He's blowing up the pa- he's blowing up the play in the backfield. Um, he's great in coverage, great tackling. Um, so he was a guy that I've I don't know when I stumbled across his film. It was a while back. Uh, and I was like, man, this guy could play. I uh, was able to meet him I was randomly going to, you know, spring practice. Uh, got to see him in person. So the, you know, the size and the um, the frame you see on film, he has it, right? Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a big get. I think he's maybe ranked number two safety in the country. Um, and it's starting to, we're starting to see a trend when it comes to the, these defensive backs, right? These <laughs> high school defensive backs who are seeing the success. Um, right now, number one and number two uh, corners in the country, ranking-wise, um, are already committed to Ohio State. You still got a visit coming up with a guy, Dorian Brew, here um, this <laughs> month. And, you know, who knows what happens there. Safety, you get the number two safety. Um, this is the second, maybe the third safety that's committed for that 2025 class. Um, and, yeah, they're just, I mean, it's just, it, it's almost, it's amazing. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, we're, we're probably looking at, depending on how this thing shakes out, do they get a Dorian, do they get a Trey McNutt? Um, it's probably the best in terms of going in on paper, the best de- defensive back class um, coming into Ohio State, which, I mean, that's saying a lot, given that Ohio yeah. State has produced a lot of great talents. Now, not all of them were highly 
touted guy. There were five star recruits. I myself was a three star guy, right? right. Um, but still, man, you know, you, you you're seeing more. The recruiting has, has changed a little bit since we uh, since we were, were were in high school, man. You're seeing more development at a younger age at these uh-huh. positions, um, and just really more of an opportunity to see these guys play. Going through a lot of camps, all this stuff is online. Uh, so yeah, I mean they're 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 killing it. And you know, shout out to to Coach Walton, um, Coach Duhart, um, Coach um, uh, Gary, uh, the safety, the new safety coach. Man, they're just, I mean they're doing an amazing job. Yeah, I mean they call it right. I mean every time they make a little, they call it Bia, right? That's what the best in America. Uh, B-I- B-I-A, B-I-A, man, yes. Yeah, BIA <laughs> yeah. man. And, I mean, and they they're, they're killing it, and like you say, it's there's names of, of people. Couple couple of our favorites, right? We talk about Dorian Brew, who's a former, uh, who was a part of our show here. Uh, who mom is a who was a Ohio State Buckeye. So how much do we want him to be a Buckeye, right? And then you talk about Trey McNutt, who father was actually part of the football team here at Ohio State. You should train with him when we was in school. Um, how, you know, obviously we want these guys to be Buckeyes as well, but it's just like they're just kind of killing it on so many levels. Uh, Coach Walton and crew. Um, and then this really just across Ohio State, man. This really across Ohio State. So far for the 2025 class, uh, we're currently ranked number one in the nation. Uh, we have three five star commits, uh, eleven four stars. Um, ranked number one so far, and and it's it's funny. I got to explain the twenty uh, being the twenty five class, even though we just got to June of 2024. <laughs> I think I think we need to break it down just a little bit. So. With, College football has changed, right? So usually the actual day that you sign to your school usually didn't take place till around signing day is usually like that last it's usually that first to second week in February is the actual day you sign to go to your school. But now where everyone's kind of getting to school sooner, people are making that decision now in the summer. They play their senior year of football as in getting ready for spring ball. They're kind of off already at the school. So everyone's committing out in the summer. It's a, it's the middle of 2024, but we're talking about the 2025 class here at Ohio State. Um, I mean, they're killing it, man. I mean, killing it, right? I mean, like, it's yeah. it's been this way over the last handful of years. And like you say, it's, it's just different, right? I mean, you being the three-star coming out of Florida, what, what like, this is, this, I guess, kind of talk about that now. From back then to like now, where we at? Where it's essentially four or five stars from across the nation all come into Ohio State. Yeah, I think a, a few things have changed. Um, one, just technology has changed, right? So you can find guys um, a lot more now with their everybody's film being online. They're on Twitter. They're, you know, they're saying who they're who where they're visiting. They're saying who's offered them. So that that information is shared uh, with much much more transparency now. But the other thing that's changed is like, you know, as you mentioned, like guys commit now, a lot of guys show up in January, right? Um, and I think what was crazy when I, when I, uh, you know, our freshman year was really when guys started showing up at the beginning of the summer. Yeah. Right? Maybe our freshman year, maybe the year before people had, had, had done that, but our freshman year was like, this is standard. Across the country, everybody shows up at the beginning of the summer. Me personally, I wasn't ready to show up at the beginning of summer. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided that I was going to finish my high school stuff, come in like maybe mid summer, later on. I had to figure that out. Um, but that was like, I was the anomaly to come in yeah. late, right? And it was it was weird because I was behind. I had the red shirt sure. and everything. Um, now guys are showing up in the winter, which means these guys are technically high school seniors when they show up and they're going through spring football. Which is crazy. I remember after the uh, the spring game, I I think it was uh, Garrett Stover. I think Garrett Stover, um, the freshman um, linebacker. Um, you know, we, after the spring game, ate ate some food, um, and I was pretty much sitting with his his family, and it was interesting how they were talking about you know whose kids going back to the prom, going back to the <laughs> school, and going to prom. Now when they get back. They can't fit into their suit because now they're so much bigger than they were. Uh, but I, it, it reminded me that these guys are high school seniors, um, and everything has shifted for. And then when you add in the money element, right, it makes that decision even so much more important as a high school player. Um, so you got a lot of guys who are more developed, more prepared, 
or getting more prepared early on. I think for me personally, I was a three-star recruit. Um, I really made my decision to go to Ohio State because to me it was the best school uh, across the board in all areas that offered me. Um, and, you know, my mindset really going in is I'm a young player. I'm going to compete. Um, but we had a lot of guys, <laughs> really, that were three-star. Malcolm Jenkins, James lord I mean, um, I think Brian Hartline. Like, we had a ton of guys um, who weren't those highly touted. So I, my question to you is, you know, when you look at it, it's clear Ohio State is killing it recruiting-wise. Right. However, you know, how much does it mean that these guys are five stars, four stars um, across the board right? to you? Like how much is, how, how important is that? Is it that they're recruiting guys who are considered the best by all of those who make consideration? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I, we say a little bit different that right. Jim? Cause me and you both are three stars, right? I'm an Ohio kid. So my, since I was since I started watching college football, I was always a Ohio State fan. So it was always a dream of mine to be able to, you know, to go on and play for Ohio State. Obviously, I went to a high school, I went to Glenville High School in Cleveland, where essentially we, my, my senior class, we called it a pipeline. So it was myself, Robert Rose, Ray Small on the cover of a magazine. Like, yeah, pipeline to Ohio State uh, just due to, you know, what we was able to accomplish. So I was able to kind of get that done. But essentially, you know, I would say when I was in school, before we were out, before we start really doing this show, I wasn't very in tune with recruiting because it, it to me it's like, you know, it's like okay, so we got such and such or such and such playing here. Like, how is he going to come to college, develop, and then transform with how he's developed into the field? Because for myself, I was a, a fat kid, right? I was a big guy, <laughs> fat kid, still a big guy. But so coming to Ohio State, I had to do a lot not to change. You talk about guys gaining weight, they can't fit this. I had to lose weight. I had to go to Ohio mm-hmm. State. I had to lose weight. I had to gain a lot of muscle for me to kind of get into the shape needed to play at the collegiate level. Mentally, I say I was always there. I was always good at understanding scheme, understanding how to block guys. But physically, I had a lot to work on when I stepped into the door. Um, so the same thing for these guys. Now, obviously, it's a little bit more professional for them, right? Because they're, they're kind of getting money. They're they got other things to kind of consider, right? When, when picking a school, or if it's not working out, considering going to a different school. Uh, but for me, it's like I'm already at my dream school. It can't. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere else. Like I'm, I'm cutting the rope, and I'm going to put the work in and see, you know, what I could do here for, uh, for the Ohio State, for my team, for Coach Tressel, who who put the faith in and, and uh, offering me a scholarship. So it's great that we're bringing in talent. I like that we're bringing in talent. But as we know, as we know, you have to be able to kind of take this talent, develop it, get them mentally ready to go, yeah. play a season, win games, beat the team up north, compete in the playoffs, win the national championship. All these things they have to kind of be groomed into. So, it's I like the talent coming in. I'm not not I I, I love it. Let's keep doing it. I say we need that fence around Ohio. The top guys in Ohio need to be committed to Ohio State. So I'm sure we still got room for Dorian Brew and Trey McNutt <laughs> to say that. Uh, but, yeah, we got to keep building there, but keep winning as well. That's very important how we're developing these guys, and we got to get things right in that in our rivalry game if we want to, um, you know, still consider, you know, feel feel good about, about, about the work that we're doing uh, at the high school level. Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at – and you just kind of look at that team up north. You look, you just compare. Um, they've done a – in the last couple years, they did a solid job of, of developing guys, um, not having a number one, number two, number three recruiting class, but having good players. I mean, it's not like it's not like they just weren't getting high-level players. They were getting high-level <laughs> high school players um, and also getting guys out of the transfer portal as well to fill in gaps. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're really getting those guys now, right? No. Um, they're still yeah. getting solid players, but they're not, they haven't gotten a lot of commits for that 2025 class. Um, yeah. Still- this, this real quick before you go on. I just want to shout out on the list. Right now, Michigan is 47 in the nation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, we're recruiting for that 25 class with only six commits and uh, four. They're all, all, all the four-star, only six commits. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
Nah. They're down. They're really down in the nation. I mean, right in no, the so, middle of the pack. So you don't. You don't have to. Now, Ohio State is killing it, but you don't have to be the number one, number two. It's good. It'd be great to to be that, right? And I feel like Alabama, Georgia, they've done that consistently as well. But you do have to get really good players, and like you mentioned, you have to develop those players. I think they're falling short right now, and I think that falling short really comes down to when you have a new coach. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the guy who's used to running a a a, a biz a, a operation um, where there's so many things to think about and consider. Um, there's some some things slip through the cracks, and right now recruiting mm-hmm. for them, I think, is kind of slipping. Uh, but there's some guys out there that I'm pretty sure are good enough to be offered. They're not offering. Uh, there's it's not just that they're not getting the top guys. There's some guys that they should be able to find. Um, some diamond in the rough, some three-star guys and four-star guys that should be able to find, offer, uh, get commits, and be able to develop into players like they've done in the past. And I think yeah. they're missing out on that. Yeah, so, I mean, we, it, it, something's going to happen, right? I mean, obviously, we know they had a couple of scandals, right, kind of take place with, uh, what you want to call it, the, the Spygate? I don't know. Not, that's that's the, the Patriots. But, I mean, Spygate, uh, two thousand. 24 version, 23 version, you know, sending guys, collecting. I mean, and then this, I mean, there's also the, like the, the, the piracy stuff that kind of went on that kind of got a few coaches dismissed. You imagine that there is something coming from the NCAA regarding some type of penalty for this stuff. I don't think any decision has been made, but do you think that's maybe a factor into uh, some of the, the high school recruits committing to Michigan? They don't, cause they don't know what the immediate future is going to look at, look like for the program. I, I think it's a big factor. I think it's a, a major factor. But I also think, you know, you can – there's guys to be gotten. <laughs> like, yeah. There's guys to be gotten. If Ohio State is getting – when you look at cornerback, Ohio State is getting the number one corner in the nation, the number two corner in the nation, the number th- three, four, number two safety, number one, number two. Like, that means there's a lot of guys. <laughs> right? Yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight, oh. nine, ten, eleven. Like, there's a lot. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, still a lot of guys mm-hmm. left. It's like, yeah. it's, it's different when, you know, generally Ohio State and Michigan are competing, or, uh, competing for some of the same talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, when you're landing the top guys in every position, I mean, there's another tier of guys who, by the way, just because they're the top guy in high school doesn't mean they finish college football as a top guy, right? Um, and there's tons of evidence there, right? So I feel like they're just not doing a great job of being able to identify those guys who aren't – maybe maybe they do – maybe there's, maybe the top guys are choosing Ohio State. Maybe some guys are choosing Oregon. Um, but there's another layer of, of, of talent that I think Michigan has the brand um, and the ability to get. And it may really come down to – they don't, they're not putting the money up to get them. I don't know what. I don't know how that shit, how that, uh, all of that works exactly in terms of the NIL money. But they're definitely falling behind, and I think, I think they filled a good roster this year, um, and probably next year. But some of that attrition, I think, starts to happen with them not being able to secure recruits, them not yeah. being able to get guys out of the transfer portal, and that's when you start losing what you had. Like everybody says, oh. You know, you know the coaches already beat Ryan Day or whatever. Okay, but this isn't about one game. This isn't about one three games or whatever. However many games he's coached, this is about running an operation yeah. <laughs> that you have to be able to sustain for years and years and years. Right. I mean, we're talking about the team that just won the national championship, yeah. right? The team that just won the national. Championship. I mean, you, you should be able to just kind of at least roll around the Midwest and just kind of just, just just scoop guys up. Like, yeah, you know, who want to come play for the national championship program? But we know that went out the door. Basically, that national championship program went west. <laughs> went west <laughs> to L.A. To, for, to, 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 be a, to be a charger. So, I mean, obviously, it's different up there. And obviously, it's kind of reflecting in the recruiting. I think, like you say, Next year they probably would be decent. I have them l- losing more games than, than most people do, uh, but they'd probably be a decent team. But in the future here, if they don't, you know, pick it up in the right areas, they're definitely going to fall behind, especially in the conference where we're gaining so many teams that we know are, are on the ball when it comes to uh, recruiting and, and all the things of that nature. 
Yeah, it's like it's like a two conference race when it comes to, you know, what's what's happening moving forward in terms of NCAA ruling and the revenue sharing and who has the most money, et cetera. It's the Big Ten and it's the SEC. So now you have to compete, not with just Ohio State, not with, you know, Michigan State, et cetera. Now you're competing with USC, Oregon, Washington, because, you know, at this point, players are like, look, am I going to the Big Ten? Am I going to the SEC? Uh, yeah, there's some opportunity for other schools or whatever. But, you know, the the, the competition has changed. There's some West Coast teams out there that they're going to be fighting with the same group of players. Every every crop of players. So they're going to have to get more creative in how they, how they figure out, you know, who do we offer? Who can we get in here? Who can we develop? Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see that competition with, uh, with the West Coast. They definitely have the advantage in terms of winter weather. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, not everything else. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, so I mean, we talk about Ohio State recruiting, right? And obviously, we're killing it in the, in the defensive backfield. Um, is there a position right this point in time that you know you want us here? You want to see one of those those uh, social media booms, right? What what position do you want to see a boom in for Ohio State, just so we could continue? on the right path, of, I guess, getting talent in in the right areas so we continue to, uh, this this dominant offseason that we're having. Yeah, I think we've we've done a masterful job on the in DB <laughs> when it comes to the, uh, defensive backfield. Uh, and year after year after year, we've done great when it comes to receiving. Um, obviously, 2025 is another year, and you expect more four-star and five-star guys to commit. Um but for me, I'm really focused on the offensive line, defensive line, mostly. Right? Um, we have some commits already, but that foundation is really important. Uh, the flashy stuff on the outside, I love it, um, but you got to win in the trenches. One place where Michigan has gotten some commits is on the defensive line um, and even on the offensive line. And I think that's the competition, when you talk about stacking up against that team of North, that's a competition we want to have. We need to win because uh-huh. um, as we saw the last few years, um, the game was won in the trenches for the most part. So, you know, that's that's really where my focus is. I enjoy all of it, right, because you need to have yep. players across the field. But that offensive line, man, we need to make sure that we continue to, to have that pipeline um, uh, continuing to and, – and like Urban said, he can't fill the offensive line with just Ohio State players anymore. <laughs> just Ohio players. Ohio anymore. guy, yeah. yeah so. I mean, but, yeah, I mean, so I'm just looking at the list. I'm going over the list right now. So the only commitment that we have for the 25 class on the offensive line is Carter Lowe. He's from Ohio. He's from the Toledo area, four-star player there. Uh, but I, I would have to agree, you know I mean? Um, now I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm showing my age here. But when I was in school, right, back when we were in school, right, the offensive line, it, we had a proud about ourselves that we was better than the Michigan guys. Like, right, you know, it, it was no doubt in our minds that we was the better offensive line unit than the team up north. And then everything else kind of was what it was, right? Who quarterback, quarterback, receiver, whatever, running back. As a unit up front, we felt like we was the better unit every year that I played at Ohio State going against that team up north. Over the last couple of years, to be frank, you know, can we say the same, right? I mean, it's like I know Michigan is winning their off the line is winning awards, national awards for being the best group in the in the nation. Um, and on our year and here at Ohio State, we kind of starting off the season. We got a lot of questions about you know you know we got we got talented guys up front, but are they playing together successfully as a unit? Um, are they going in the right direction um, and, and blocking guys? And we kind of have those questions, right? And, yeah. and Michigan has not been having those questions. Matter of fact, it's been like. We got good guys here. We got good guys behind them. Uh, so, yeah. So, I would say, like, you know, we need to do a little bit more there. And when it comes to see me for offensive linemen, it's like, you know, they're always swigging. Once again, just kind of Ohio State recruiting and swigging for all these big names, big names, big names. And a lot of these guys are usually not going too far from home, right? You're off the lineman. You, you're, you're in the South. You, you go to your Georgia, your Alabama, your, yeah. your Florida. You go to these, these schools that, that you're near. You need to kind of do the same thing in Ohio. And obviously last year we did have success. We got a couple guys out of the Cleveland area, uh, the Twins on the offensive of line. Um, and, but we got to kind of have to keep that going. Get the guys 
that have the frame to play off of the line, the ability to play off the line in the area. Maybe they need to develop a little bit, but keep them, get them in, and then let them develop. You have fantastic staff for the Ohio State. Develop them, and then those guys will feel the pride of being better than the guys up north. They know it. They feel it in their souls. We was recruited, hired them. Usually they got – because usually in, the big, in Ohio, if you're going from – you got the Ohio State offering. You have the Michigan offering. And you chose to go play at Ohio State. And you go out there and you show it. Like, yeah, this is why I went to Ohio State over you guys. They kind of have to keep that mindset and be able to kind of go out there and do that, especially, I feel like, in a local area when it comes to developing linemen and kind of getting them to the school. Because, you know, five-star receiver, great. But we need to get some of those, you know, yeah, three-star off of the linemen around Ohio to me check a, check a box. <laughs> so, yeah, so Ohio State wide receiver you. BIA, BIA, best in America when it comes to defensive backs, corners specifically. Do you feel like a young offensive lineman whose who's dream is to make it to the NFL and develop and be the next, you know, whoever, um, do you feel like Ohio State feels like the place to go to do that? If, if, if I was to put up, let me, let me rephrase that. If I was to put up Ohio State, maybe Michigan, maybe Iowa, um. Yeah, just you know, a few Big Ten schools. Do you feel like Ohio State stands out as that place? It depends on how well you know your history, right? I mean, it's not you know this past draft, right? We didn't have we didn't have anyone on the offensive line get drafted, right? But the last year before that, we had a first rounder in Paris Johnson. We had Dewan Jones go in the fourth round and play the majority of the season for the for the Cleveland Browns until he had an injury. Um. We had we we get guys drafted in the first round just like anyone else, but it, you have to you have to be paying attention to it, right? Because it's kind of like a thing where once again, if you're just sitting at home, I remember when I was in school, Iowa was the school for off of the lineman. So if you wanted to be a good off the lineman, you wanted to get developed, you went to Iowa because that that was the place to do it. Um, Wisconsin always kind of had that same aura about it as well. You want to be be a big guy. You want to get developed, you go to Wisconsin, they develop you to be a, a, a good off of the lineman. At Ohio State, we still had talent. We still had guys from Ohio uh, going on, getting drafted, and having successful NFL careers. But it's just not as flashy, right? The same mm-hmm. thing that you're using to get your five-star wide receiver may not be the same package you need to use to try to get your four, three-star in-state off of the lineman uh, around Ohio or around the, around the Midwest. So I think it's a perception thing, right? If you're a young guy watching TV, you're hearing about all the success that these Michigan guys are having. So maybe you kind of start going that way. But I feel like really we haven't lost a bunch of guys to the team of North in the the trenches. I just feel like we're kind of – kind of swinging swinging, – swinging too hard, swinging too far on some of these big-name guys when it comes to the offensive line where we can just kind of – Shore up our guys uh, around locally, and then develop them so they could be that player in three or four years. Because uh, it's off the line, right? You know what I mean? It's like you have to develop there more than you had to develop at most other positions uh, to kind of get ready for the college level. So give them some time. Give them some grace. <laughs> yeah, I, and you know, if and this, I'm not an offensive lineman. But when I think offensive line, Iowa comes to mind. Wisconsin comes to mind. Um, the team up north comes to mind. Uh, you know, I feel like we gotta make a Ohio State offensive line. We gotta make it sexy to be a Ohio State offensive line. Man. Gotta, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We gotta hype up the offensive line, man. It's, it's, there's something there, man. We gotta we gotta continue to to, to push that. Um, and I think it, it might be time for you to do some work, man. Yeah. You, know, you, you keep talking about getting some guys yeah. locally, getting yeah. some guys. <laughs> maybe Ohio, maybe Indiana, maybe, you know. You might have to go find those guys and develop them yourself while they're in high school. Man. You might need to uh, do the work, you know, do the work early so that these guys are, you know, ready to, to go so that Ohio State can identify them. And, and yeah. the, the, I, say, I say plainly like, yeah. like this. If a guy can run and he can jump. <laughs> if he can run and he can jump and he's around 5'10 and, and higher, I can make him a D one football player. Simple as that. So if if, when, if if a guy shows up and he can he can run, he can jump, he's five ten or higher, he'll play D one. If he spends some time, I'll train him up. He'll be ready to go. How they can choose him if they want. 
If not, you can go to one of the other Big Ten schools. So it's time for you to step in and do some of that, some of that hard labor, man. Yeah, I think so, man. I mean, you're, you're not talking crazy here. I mean, it's it's it's, it's off of the line as is, is a position. I mean, I like I could probably re- literally think in my head of how many guys are really just ready coming from high school to actually step on the college field and actually it actually belong. I mean, you could just stick yeah. a guy out there, right? And he just kind of, you know, he trying to run the plays and trying to do the right things. But, you know, is he actually out there kind of, you know, making solid contact and actually getting to some guys and, and showing some dominance out there? It takes time. It takes the right mindset. It takes the little things, the understanding of how a play is runs, how it's developed, and how when to, when to come off to the next level, and how to place your hands in uh, on a deep alignment to kind of have a success. Um, it's just a it's a huge change. It's a huge change. But yeah, man, maybe it is time, man, to kind of dust off the old cleats and and, and get me a crew. Go out there, get some cones. All you need is some cones, some cones and some willing bodies. I mean, you can have some bags, but all you need is willing bodies when you come down to it. You can develop a guy from there, man. So, yeah, man, maybe. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going to get you some resistance bands, too, some resistance bands, just in case, man, guys. No, man, big guys don't like bands, man. Yeah, they, need, like they need them, man. They, need they, they, they pinch our skin, man. They don't like it, man. We got, we got fluffier <laughs> skin. They don't like that, man. Yeah, man, but I mean, you got a shirt on, man. You got your you got your built shirt on, man. I, I, I'm loving that logo. Yeah, this nice, is, uh, nice, clean, clean T. T- tell the word yeah. about built, man. So built, built stands for brain image and likeness uh, technologies, and I mean the focus for built is really trying to trying to figure out ways to get young athletes, college athletes, um, an opportunity to really maximize their NIO value and you know, maximize it for the long term. So, uh, built it's a group of guys who, uh, a couple former, a athletes, good group of guys, a couple good former athletes, <laughs> right? Uh, 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 engineer, um, really looking to make that connection with the athlete who, you know, some of these athletes, this is going to be their peak in terms of, in terms of their marketability, um, with entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs who are growing companies, growing businesses, trying to expand, need to get that, um, that 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 marketing out, trying to get more notoriety, making that connection between the two, and you know, allowing this this player to learn how to be an owner, be a part owner, maybe get a small part of equity in that business, help that business grow. But at the same time, that entrepreneur um, can can leverage the network of the athlete and the ability to market their product and, and um, hopefully create some impact and some opportunity long term for both of them to grow their business. Um, past their football playing day. So, you know, that's just a really quick explanation of what Built is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll co- continue to give you some more information about some of the progress and what's been done. Um, but really starting here on the ground floor in Columbus, Ohio, and seeing how, how it goes. Yeah, man, that's fantastic. Over our, the course of our show, we would teach the people – that listen a little bit more about Bill. We'll continue to talk about it and want to kind of get that out so it could be a, a, a well-known brand starting off here in Columbus, Ohio. But that's our show for today. If you're listening, please subscribe. Follow us on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. Click the subscribe button. Tune in to us. We have more information coming off over the summer regarding Ohio State and its recruiting and our continuing to dominate there. And as we end all our show for the nice OH, I-O. go Bucks. I'll catch you guys soon. Go Bucks.